Hi everyone, it's Meredith with Soul Navigation and welcome to my Sexy Seduction series. Today, we are gonna talk about how to seduce an Aries, how to lure them into your bed, how to lure them into your heart, how to lure them into your soul, make them want to ravish you and stay with you forever, never leaving. So if you have your Mars in Aries, or if you are in Aries or Aries rising or Mars in the first house, or your moon in Aries, or maybe even your Venus in Aries, or if that's your lover, you definitely don't want to miss this video. I am going to give you all of the secrets. This is Aries Unzipped. <laughs> In this video, I am going to teach you the top nine seduction techniques. When you do these techniques, I promise you, your Aries is going to be so enthralled, invigorated, inspired by you. So how do you keep your Aries always coming back for more and sexually stimulated and satisfied forever? We're going to explore it. First, you have to understand that Aries comes with a lot of bold, brazen passion. They're really direct in their sexual pursuits and they know how to chase. They know how to pursue. They know how to go after something that they want or someone. They're usually really confident lovers and they do better with short bursts of really intense, passionate energy, and uh, they clip at a fast pace, so they like to keep things moving, and they don't love lazy, long, drawn-out moments that are so boring and tiring. You know, they like to keep it moving. <laughs> They're not the easiest people to get a commitment from, but if you do these nine seduction techniques, I am confident you can keep your Aries satisfied their whole life long. Okay, so you're going to want to listen to this video all the way through because you need all nine of these techniques and don't miss the last secret tip because I always save the best for last and that's how you can win your Aries over. Bring your sense of humor. No pun intended here, but I do tongue in cheek sense of humor sometimes. So just forgive me. <laughs> I kind of believe in the truth in humor. So I put a lot of humor into my truth, but I'm still truthful. Also, if you're in Aries and you can't relate to this video, please tell me what your Mars sign is. If you don't know your Mars sign, you can always buy a natal chart from me. I don't know. It's so inexpensive. I've been an evolutionary astrologer for 23 years. I have a really busy practice and I just started doing these videos in hopes that I could really teach other people and share my knowledge with you. So I hope you enjoy this video. Sit back, enjoy. I got my Libra mug for my Aries video because Aries can always use a little touch of Libra. So if you're dating an Aries or if you're married to an Aries or you've lost the lust for your partner and and you're in Aries or they're in Aries, well, show them this video for sure. Or if you just have a crush or you're trying to launch something with an Aries, it's not simple. Aries are kind of complicated. Oh, by the way, I just saw my background. We're ready for Halloween. I don't always have bats up on my uh, fireplace, but my little daughter, she's so darling. She um, has decorated this whole entire house and it's actually quite festive. First, I'm going to tell you Aries aphrodisiac. You probably already know it. Are you ready? Dun, dun, dun. Confidence. Yep, confidence. So if you don't have a good dose of confidence, you might as well just say bye-bye to your Aries now because it's not going to work. Let me save you. Let me do something really great for you and save you because you need a really big, hefty, hefty dose of confidence to be with an Aries. Why? Because they are going to test this confidence all day long day after day after day after day. They'll do it inadvertently, they'll do it unknowingly, and they'll do it knowingly. So be confident or don't play. Seduction tip number one. Okay, as soon as it's appropriate, confess a little secret to them. It can be a sensual or a sexual secret. Talk about a place you've never been to. Talk about a thing you've never done. It can be as innocent as skinny dipping, but just get their minds going about how you just have always wanted to do this particular 
fantasy or this particular adventure and talk about how you just didn't have the guts or it has never been the right time or you didn't trust somebody enough to do that or explore that with, believe me, you will get their mind spinning around how they would love to help you fulfill that very fantasy or adventure. They want to be the queen in your life or the king in your life. They want to take you places no one has ever taken you before. Seduction tip number two, do this in reverse. I call this operation reverse secret. (laughs) So just do the one I just mentioned above, do it in reverse. So while they love being your hero, your king, your queen, they also love kind of even more being with someone who can get them to reveal the little thing inside of them, get them to cough up the thing they've never done, the thing they've always wanted to do. And it kind of helps if they pick something that you have experience in or if you've done it before. So set up that very adventure that they have always kind of wanted to do or that fantasy, that little fantasy that they've always had that they've never done and set it up and teach them and show them because they rarely ever meet anyone who has done more than them or who is better than them or stronger than them or more confident or courageous than them. So make them kind of in awe of you, of how gutsy you are. Here's an example. One of my best friends is an Aries. She's going to be watching this video and she learned how to ride a motorcycle not that long ago. And she met this man who has been riding a bike his whole life. And he's very good at it. And so when they were on their third or fourth date, he suggested going for a ride. Well, I thought it was really, really cute because it wasn't like hop on the back of my bike, right? It was like, no, I want to see you ride. Get on your bike. And he took her on windy roads and he took her on the freeway and he took her on a long distance trip or a longer distance than she would normally go. Basically, he expanded her courage. He expanded her desire to take more risks than she would alone because he was better at it. And so he kind of became her teacher, her guide, her guru, her master motorcycle biker guy, right? It really melted her heart to be with somebody who had the same passion as her, but he had it bigger and bolder and stronger and better, right? And so it made her really, really melt her Aries ice cube for him. And she started going on rides that took more courage, required more courage and expanded her. Wow, if that is not the biggest turn on for Aries. Seduction tip number three, be Aries playmate. Yes, play a game with them. But I'm not really talking about the mind game that I wanted you to play with Scorpio or Libra. It's not that mental chess game. It is actually a real game. So play a game of cards, play a game of tennis, pinball, ping pong. It doesn't matter what. It, it You know, play anything with them, Marco Polo, hide and seek. It does not matter what it is, but I'm talking a real game and they love more than anything competition. And if you are a match for them, you should actually pick a game you're good at and a game that you can most likely beat them at. For me, it would have to be words with friends or Scrabble (laughs) because I don't think I could physically beat an Aries in any game. Well, maybe ping pong. (laughs) But anyways, if you're a match for them, not only are they going to want to sleep with you, they are going to crave you and most importantly, respect you. They will see you as so powerful and Aries can only stay attracted to someone who has real power. So it's actually kind of a good thing if you can beat them. Just don't make them lose their dignity. Don't make them lose, you know, their... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> their their strength and powerful facade, I should say. Don't rub it in their face, you know. Tell them how good they are at the game and how it was actually really hard for you and how it was a close call and how it just took everything out of you to... <laughs> to beat them and then tell them that they're so good that you'd like a rematch and then beat them again. (laughs) They're not going to want to play a third time. They just won't. Be artful and graceful and tactful and let them keep their power and their dignity. But I'm going to tell you that if you can do this for real and if you can do this authentically, this is going to score you so many points with your Aries. Seduction tip number four, create 
an aura or an idea of mutual greatness. So don't be an ass, but do show off all your successes, your status, your winnings in your life. Show off your fame and fortune and your pathway to, you know, greatness and reveal it. Don't be shy. You know, Aries, they can handle a good brag, especially if it's true. I don't want you to have a fake brag, but I do want you to have a good solid brag. Talk about how destiny has your back. The world is your oyster. You've got opportunities galore. God, they love this. They love this. You're on your rightful path to winning. You know, Aries doesn't like losers and they don't like being with a loser and they don't like losing. They don't like anything around losing. What I want you to do is also simultaneously mention that you see a greatness in them. And pick something out that is truly authentically great about them. And kind of blow it up for them. Let them see that you see it in them, right? And talk about your mutual greatness. How you guys are both kind of in this same great plane. This same great vibrational plane. Where you guys both get success. Mention in a way how you see this power in them. And how you have a lot of respect for their greatness too. And talk about your combined greatness so they start to see that you are their equal. I should let you know that you have to take the entire chart into consideration and there's over 40,000 different aspects. You have to look at all of the planets. When you're looking at compatibility, I do look at Mars, but I do also look at the moon and I look at your communication planets of Mercury and I see how it all unfolds together. And I am a love and relationship expert, but if you can't get on my calendar because it is pretty packed and I book a couple months in advance, but you want the best love and relationships report on the market, just scroll down below, go onto my online scheduler and you can order the love and relationship compatibility report right there. It's so inexpensive. And if you have both people's birth times, oh my God, it will blow you away. You'll see the perspective from your partner's point of view. And you'll also see the relationship through your point of view. It is so, so good. And you can't find this report in very many places. It's not out there on Astro Dean's. It is so darn good. You'll want this report. Okay, seduction tip number five, be an asset to them. You have to present yourself as an asset to their ego. And their ego ain't no small thing, right? These people like to own a room. I don't even know if they know they're owning a room, but they own a room. Their energy is so big, so loud, so vibrant. It is like, bam, the Aries is in the house, right? They want a partner that can bring it, but not necessarily steal their thunder. They don't want somebody standing in their shadow, sucking their thumb, but They also don't want somebody who eclipses their power, their glory, their fame, their essence, their aura. Be supportive of their glory and popularity and even help them advance it. Yes, that is the key. That is the juicy fruit. Help them expand it advance their cause, figure out what it is and show up and support them in all their beauty, all their gorgeous glory. They will love it. So if you are an Aries, I would love to hear your feedback. And if you're involved with an Aries, I would love to know your Aries story. Tell me, tell me, can you relate to this? And is this your Mars sign or is this your sun sign? So tell me where you have Aries in your chart. Let's talk about seduction tip number six. This tip is called winning versus having won. Let me explain it to you because it's a nuance. And uh, this one's a little bit more complex, but I want to tell you to be something to win. So I'm not saying one, I'm saying be something to win, be something to chase. And if you're in Aries, you may hate me for this. And you may even say it's not true, but Trust me, after 143,000 readings, I'm telling you, this is true. This is so true. You might not want to admit it, but it is true. So as I have mentioned before, Aries loves to win. So you give them something to win, but just not too fast. You have to lay down 
kind of a complicated obstacle course that they do have a chance at winning at. Aries really loves the process. I have to get in here to tell you. The process of winning over having won. Mm -hmm. They like to hunt. They like the chase. They like to feel like they had to overcome great odds and obstacles to win you. So set it up where being with you might be a possibility. You're not sure, but it might be a possibility. Don't be 100% available to them. Don't do life totally on their terms. And do not, whatever you do, be remotely desperate. They can smell desperate, clingy, glommy from five miles away. I mean, they have a better sense of scent for that than a dog. I mean, they can sniff that out five miles away. Don't be clingy. You have to be ferociously independent in order to capture these Aries. Actually, they have to capture you. <laughs> They're the hunter. So you be busy with your courageous, badass life, and you do not want them to think that you're waiting around for them. So you're not letting them know that you want to be with them. You're just being sexy as hell and you are hard to have. Let them pursue you. Let them chase you. Let them call you. Let them text you. Why? Because they can. They're capable. This is one of the signs that is really capable of old fashioned pursuit. Just know they like having to convince you to be with them. They do. They like having to convince you because that means you are worth something. They like feeling that they had to swim, you know, to the bottom of the ocean floor or they had to parachute out of the plane or they had to, you know, move the mountains or cross the country or part the Red Sea to have you. So keep them on the run chasing you. And after you walk down the aisle and after you're married, you still have to stay busy. You still have to keep the obstacle course running for them. Otherwise, they will lose interest and they will get bored. Once they've captured you, they can't hold on to the curiosity about you as well. So you have to kind of keep them in perpetual motion, wanting to have you getting closer and closer and closer and closer to getting you. If they get you too quickly, they won't value you. Now, you might be with an Aries that tries to go really fast. Don't do it. Because all Aries, they're so charming. They have so much charisma. They have confidence. And they usually can get you undressed pretty quickly. And I'm telling you right now, don't do it. <laughs> Not if you like them. If you like them and you want them to call you in the morning, you have got to have them run the obstacle course in order to maybe win you. But once you're won... Well, then it's a different game. So don't let them completely win you. It's always a process, right? It's always a verb with them. Keep them pursuing, chasing, running, right? My seduction tip number seven, and this tip's a little bit sick. So forgive me. I'll warn you before I say it, but just trust me. It does work. Let them believe, and this is better if it is authentic. I don't suggest playing games, and I do suggest that if this is authentic and genuinely you, an Aries is perfect for you. But if your relationship has kind of gone south and you need a little bit of um, spice, this is really good. So you can revive a relationship with an Aries too by implementing these tips. So let them believe that their incredible, fabulous, powerful, courageous self is the normal standard for you. They are eh, what you're used to. <laughs> I don't care how amazing this Aries is. Make them feel a little bit average or normal in your opinion. Give them only tiny compliments at first and be interesting, but not too interested in them. Don't be overly fascinated with them. You know, don't let them know that you think they are so sexy or so brilliant or the best thing you've ever known. Do not give them that because if you give them all those compliments too quick, too big, too fast, they will lose interest in you. 
act as if their greatest accomplishment or their sexy body is the normal standard. Eh, it's okay. And don't buy into their big ego trip. And we know they have a big ego. They can get all of those compliments from you in time. But for right now, they have to earn your compliments. They have to earn them. I don't care if this is Russell Crowe or James Franco or Marlon Brando or Steven Tyler. I don't care how incredible this person is. If you want your Aries, you have to keep your feelings to yourself and do not talk about being soulmates until after you've walked down the aisle. We need to dole these out in time, over time. So are you an Aries and can you relate to any of this? Please let me know below. Leave me a comment and also leave me a comment on which sign you would like for me to do next. I want to know. Share your stories with me. We're going to build a community here. And every time you leave a little piece of Aries in the comments below, other people get to benefit and learn from Aries as well. So it's really, really good. And I invite you to share your Aries stories. Seduction tip number eight, bring lighthearted, fun adventure to the table. Don't be too deep too soon. Unless you know that they have a passion for depth like um, Quentin Tarantino or Vincent Van Gogh, right? They probably have an appetite for depth like other Aries might not have. But most Aries don't want to go to the depths of the soul and reveal all their secrets and be vulnerable to you and have your vulnerability all on them. And they like light banter. They like a solid debate, and they like really intense physical activity, but not necessarily emotional intensity right away. I think they'll go there afterwards when they feel comfortable with you, but not too quick, too fast, too soon. And by the way, I keep saying that because Aries will have you convinced and make you believe that you can do everything tonight. Reveal yourself, give yourself, completely lose yourself, and don't do it because Aries does everything quickly and you need to resist that speed and they will come at you with powerful speed. They love adventure. They love laughter. See, I think Aries are so tightly wound in their day because uh, they are on the battlefield of life. I mean, they are out there fighting little miniature mini and sometimes really big wars all day long that they like to come home or they like to escape into a lighthearted playfulness. You can help them escape all those battles that they're fighting in their individual lives. So be fun, be light, be happy, be optimistic, be their sunshine, be their happy escape. If you're too deep, too soon, too revealing, oh, they're going to hate that. Let me give you a little side story. I heard that you guys like my side stories. So I'm going to tell you one right here. I'm going to tell you how I lost my Aries. So about 23 years ago, I was dating a man and I really liked him and he was an Aries. And he asked me to come over to his house that evening to watch a movie. And I said, sure. And he said, we'd have a romantic night. So he picked out the movie. And I'm telling you, this was like the worst choice of a movie anybody could ever pick. And I tried nicely to say no, but it was about a girl who got cancer and she was in love with a boy. It wasn't fault in our stars, but it was similar to that. But I know me, I am so sensitive and I'm an empath. And uh, I just knew it would be, I would be a train wreck. I knew I would cry. I knew I'd be emotional. I knew I would be like filleted open. I would probably just be a mess. So I tried talking him into like, a, I don't know, Eddie Murphy movie or something, but he wouldn't have it. He wanted to see this movie. He thought it would be so good and so romantic. Oh my God. So there we are snuggled up and we're watching this movie and I am a complete basket case. I completely lose it. Tears are streaming down my cheeks. My makeup is smeared everywhere. I do not look even decent. I am crying inconsolably like, oh, 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 oh. I can't even breathe, right? Snot's coming, coming out my nose. I'm probably drooling. I mean, I am a train wreck mess. I feel so bad badly for these characters in this movie. I can't even get a grip on life. Well, he does not try to console me. He doesn't try to snuggle me or hug me or even turn the movie off. He has had it. He is just like, oh my God, I cried myself to sleep for hours. I probably slept for 20 minutes. He was so exasperated with my over-exaggerated emotion, which by the way, it really wasn't. I really felt those things that I was just complete goner. I mean, just inconsolable train wreck 
basket case of emotions. And I wanted to talk about the depth of this movie and the gut-wrenching pain. Oh my God, I found the guy eating SpaghettiOs out in the kitchen because he could not deal with me. And that's how I lost my Aries. He literally wrote me a Dear John note and sent it in the mail. Yeah, snail mail. Mm -hmm. And I never saw him again. I have never seen him again. Can you believe that? Anyways, it is actually a good story because I moved on and I got a much better deal in life and I'm really happy. But Aries cannot go there that deep. They don't have a bandwidth for that right away. You have to earn that vulnerable emotional space in their heart. They will not go there right away. Nope. Hey, by the way, if you really want to know about Aries, go check out my Aries Rising video. It's pretty deep. I think if you've seen some of my videos now, you know that I like to break down the stereotypical stereotypes of signs. And I like to go deep, 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 deep into the core. I like to peel the onion and dig in and get that succulent truth out. And I like to I like to break up the myths and I like to tell you the truth. So go check out that video or my Everything Aries video. I think you'll really, really like it. Number nine, this is my most important tip. Are you ready? It's so easy that it's hard. And it's hard in the moment because Aries are so powerful. You must do this. If you can't do this, you can't be with an Aries. You have to stand up for yourself. You have to. Like I said before, love is a battlefield for Aries. It is never smooth sailing. If you are an Aries, would you please tell me and everyone else if your love life has just been super simple, <laughs> super easy? I don't know an Aries that has gotten it super easy and super simple in loving another person. It just doesn't go that way for them. Love, it's just too intense. And so to them, if you can stand up to them and to the world at large, this is so hot. They will fall madly, passionately in love with you. Secondly, they'll respect you. And Aries must respect their partner to fall in love with you. They don't have to respect you to have sex with you, but they have to respect you to make a deep commitment to you. They have to realize that they cannot steamroll you. They cannot walk all over you. They don't get to have their way all the time and that you can handle them and you can handle your own. If they can manipulate you, trick you, get your clothes off fast, get out all your secrets super fast, get you to emote, get you to confess how great they are, too quick, too fast, too soon. You can't say no thank you. If they can twist your morals, twist your values, um, so you don't really believe what you say, but you give them their way, and believe me, they will test you. They will test you. They do it subconsciously to see how strong you are. If you are not capable of saying no thank you to them in a way that has a dignity, a power and a strength, not in a way that picks a fight, just strong. They won't be able to be with you if you can't do that. This is one of the few signs that actually respects hearing no thank you. If you want to keep them salivating, if you want to keep them so interested in you, don't let them have their way all the time and master the art and the grace of saying no thank you. Be strong. Be confident. Now, if you're watching this video after January 2020, I want to recommend to you that you go check out all my ebooks because I'm in the process of writing them and they'll be ready after January 2020. And you can go check the link in my notes below for them if you want more information. If you're just so hungry for understanding more about love and relationships and the psyche inside the soul of all of these different zodiac signs, check out my ebook series. I think you'll really love it. So tell me your sun sign. Tell me your Mars sign, your rising sign, and your Aries stories, and leave me a comment here. I hope also that you will share this video with somebody who is in need of knowing about Aries and how to master the energy of Aries. And like, share, comment, and ring the little bell so you will be notified when I upload my next video. I hope you'll remember to come check out my YouTube station, Soul Navigation, on Sundays at 9 a.m. That's when I load up all my content. And I look forward to seeing you here next week. I can't wait. And I hope so much that you got something beneficial out of this video. Take good care. Bye from my home 
to yours. 